everyone. Welcome to today's pet podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Roberta Westbrook, and welcome to our campus for all animals, the Houston SPCA. I'm so glad you could join us. So as you can tell outside, fall is upon us. What a beautiful season. This is really one of my most favorite seasons. It's so beautiful. The weather is getting just wonderful. It was cool today. And with fall brings a new set of concerns that we could have for our pets and how to keep them safe. Every season has um, has things that are wonderful and things that we need to be concerned about for our pets. So we're going to talk about fall and all those things that you need to be aware of to keep your pets safe and happy, happy this fall season. So think of your questions that you may have related to the fall. Um, and I can hopefully help you. In the meantime, I would like to introduce you to one of our pets that's available for adoption, our pet of the week named Mabel. Mabel is an adult cat. We feel approximately four years old. She's spayed. You know, she's a wonderful, wonderful cat. Mabel was actually abandoned. So Mabel was abandoned in a home um, and our team of investigators was able to bring Mabel to us. We were able to give her a full health check. She's healthy, um, she's spayed, and now she's just looking for her forever home. So if you're looking for a family member to join your family, come visit with Mabel. Uh, she can make uh, you a wonderful family pet. So come on down, there's no appointment necessary. Please visit our adoption center. Um, you can visit with puppies, dogs, cats, kittens. We have rabbits, we have guinea pigs. So make it a family affair, bring your family, bring your friends. I mean, come on down to our adoption center this weekend. And then in the meantime, again, please consider going to our website and considering being part of our family, whether it's fostering or volunteering, uh, please come on down and be a part of our family and help us to do what we do. So let's talk about fall again beautiful season, so much going on. You know, as you can see, our beautiful decorations here is probably one of the things that you are considering first and foremost, how to get your house fall ready. And so we wanna talk first about appropriate decorations for your home and how to keep your pets safe. Because we're gonna want our homes to look beautiful like this. And some of you may be wondering, you know, is this appropriate decoration for my pets? How do I keep my pets safe? Well, I will say, first of all, it depends on your pet. Knowing your pet well is really the first key because it doesn't, the rules here don't apply for every single pet. For example, you may have a dog that has no interest in chewing up, you know, stuffed toys or getting into, you know, things that they shouldn't, chewing up tinsel. You know, some pets are not into that and, and they just don't tend to be uh, destructive in that way. However, you may have a dog or even a cat that loves to chew on things like tinsel or stuffed toys. And so knowing your pet's personality and what they're likely to do is really the first step. If you don't know, let's say you just adopted a dog, just adopted a cat, maybe this is your first fall season with them, the first time you've ever had to decorate your home, then I would say make sure that when you put your decorations up that you are watching your pet to see if they're interested in those decorations or not, seeing if they're want to, wanting to explore with their mouths. That's not uncommon for pets to want to explore with their mouths. So kind of see how they behave around them. If you notice that they're starting to do that, wanting to chew, you may opt to put the decorations up high where dogs and maybe less likely cats are able to get to them. So that may be, uh, you know, putting them up high on the walls, you know, on top of the refrigerator or dressers, somewhere where your dogs are less likely Cats certainly can jump, and so you might have to be a little bit more creative about how to keep your cats safe. And sometimes the answer is just not putting up things like this, like tinsel. So, um, does, yes, does, so is uh, tinsel damaging to cats if they ingest it? It can be. So, you know, the question is, you know, things like this tinsel, could this be damaging? It could because it can, it's a string. And so as cats swallow it, a couple of things could happen, and dogs too. Sometimes when it's a long string like tinsel, it can get caught around the tongue, the base of the tongue. Sometimes it's difficult to swallow, so this sort of material can get stuck in the esophagus or in the gastrointestinal tract and actually create um, a foreign body. And so the animal, your pet may become, uh, have tummy upset, have vomiting, uh, inappetence. They may not want to eat. They may gag a lot because they're trying to get this out. And so it depends on your pet whether they're going to you know, be interested in eating this, but it certainly could be dangerous. So if possible, you may want to avoid it. 
Um, and then we usually see more potpourri, um, you know, in homes. Is that, you know, safe just, I mean, or is it dangerous just to ingest it or just the smell can cause harm too? Right, potpourri, because again, we are really interested in all these fall smells and having your house smell really good is so important. Uh, and it's really a, a warming feeling that you want around your home. Now, the liquid potpourri tends to be the most concerning and toxic, particularly to cats. So liquid potpourri, when ingested, particularly in cats, can be uh, fatal in some cases. And the reason is when that liquid potpourri is ingested, it requires special enzymes in the body in order to break those down, to metabolize them. And one of the organs that's responsible for doing that is the liver. Well, cats don't have these particular liver enzymes that are necessary to metabolize things like liquid potpourri. And so it can make them more susceptible to um, liver failure, to um, you know vomiting, diarrhea, central nervous system disorders, um, and sometimes death. Now, in addition to that, sometimes mild side effects can occur just by being irritating to the oral cavity and mucous membranes. So just the ingestion can actually cause burns to the mouth and the oral cavity. So liquid potpourri tends to be more dangerous than the dry potpourri than you might have like in a bowl. But please don't think that is 100% safe because you could have pets that eat the dry mm -hmm. potpourri as well, which can lead to foreign bodies. So again, those, you know, the large balls or the leaves that are, you know, that are a dry potpourri, if those get caught in the stomach or the intestine, they certainly may not be toxic in the way of organ failure, but they could cause foreign bodies. So just be careful, if possible, keep those things out of reach of your pets. So we can have it out, but just make sure we, you know, put it up as soon as, you know, we're not able to watch that. Absolutely, that's a great idea. And then, you, we know, we have pumpkins, you know, uh, decorating outside, especially like if they're real ones, is it dangerous for dogs to eat pumpkins? Because sometimes we've heard that can be, you know, good for them. Yes, so the good news is pumpkins rarely, if ever, cause toxicity in our pets. You know, oftentimes veterinarians and veterinary professionals will use pumpkin for animals that have GI disturbances. So constipation or diarrhea, sometimes pumpkin can be used to help firm up stool or regulate uh, bowel movements. Pumpkin is known for its fiber content, but it also has a lot of moisture. So in general, pumpkin is safe. So if your pets get into, you know, the pumpkin, you know, eating the inside, the flesh of the pumpkin, probably not going to be toxic. Obviously, there's a, a limit and we want to do everything in moderation. So in a worst case scenario, your dog or cat just eats all the pumpkin. <laughs> uh, you know, certainly they could experience some gastrointestinal upset because it's normal when we eat too much. We eat the, the things that our system is not used to. Sometimes it does, does cause vomiting or diarrhea. But um, not going to be fatal and, and overall a safe thing for your pets to ingest. And then, what are the other like decorations that we should keep in mind? Oh yes, yeah. so if other decorations that you might have. It's Halloween. We love to put out those spider webs, those cotton spider webs. You might have candles out. Um, these things again, wonderful for decor. Could be hazards for your pets. So those spider webs again, those can cause what we call a linear or long foreign body. So uh, you can imagine those being tangled up in the gastrointestinal tract um, and being difficult to swallow and causing obstruction. You don't want your pet to wind up in the hospital. So again, make sure that you are observing your pet around these decorations and seeing how they react. If they're ignoring them, they're probably gonna be fine. But if you know you've got a curious pet, I'd watch out for those. Same thing with the candles. You know cats, cats love to knock things off of the counter. If you have a cat, You've seen your cat jump on the coffee table or the counter, and they love to hit things off of the table. If you have a lit candle and your cat knocks it off while you're not home or while you're you know, upstairs or in another room, this could be a fire hazard. So make sure that your candles are out of reach of your cats and your dogs for that matter. Um, sometimes if they jump up on the table, their tails can be you know, hitting the candle. Or I've seen, unfortunately, <laughs> some cases where um, your pet's fur can catch fire if they get too close to the candle. So please make sure that the candles, the fire, the flame is away from your pets um, to keep them safe. And like you mentioned, Halloween is just around the corner. You know, how can we get my dog to be more comfortable in a costume? Or is that a good idea? Is yes. that a good idea? Yes. 
we're all wanting to wear costumes and we often want to include our pets in this. Again, this is about knowing your pet and what he or she will tolerate. So uh, costumes can be wonderful, can be fun, but if you notice that you are putting a costume on your pet and your pet is not enjoying it, they're either running around the home frantically trying to free themselves of it, or in the opposite case, they are freezing and not wanting to move at all because they're so terrified. We don't want to induce stress in our pets. So in these cases, I might recommend either not putting a costume on them or just doing it for a very, very short period of time. Maybe if you want to get a photo or something and then take that off of them to, to reduce the stress. But you can also start with minimal costumes. So if you're looking to get your pet used to a costume and uh, and you want to start small, that's fine. Sometimes you can just start with a little bow tie, a little <laughs> t-shirt, you know, a little hat. Sometimes they make little ears or hats for your pet. Those are very minimal. That oftentimes might be a good way to know how your pet's going to react with um, a costume on. And now that it's getting darker earlier, what are some things to keep in mind for evening walks? Yes, evening walks. So I feel like evening walks are certainly, uh, you know, wonderful and can be a really good source of exercise as the as it gets cooler and it's not so hot outside you have to worry less about exhaustion and heat um you know heat intolerance and so you definitely still want to take your pet out in the cool evening is perfectly fine just be aware you know as it gets dark earlier there's certainly some hazards out there just from not being able to see it's getting darker earlier you just want to make sure that you're being safe out there uh, for just normal reasons that you would think about throughout the year and then with the temperatures dropping slowly but surely you know more people are going to be using antifreeze you know around this time of the fall how can we assure pets don't get into it yes so antifreeze so antifreeze is a chemical that we're putting in our cars oftentimes during the winter uh, to prevent overheating. This is very toxic to dogs and cats. So please, in your garage, take an inventory of your garage, make sure that you do not have antifreeze that's sitting at ground level, make sure the lid is on and tight and that none has spilled out. What can happen is if your pets ingest antifreeze or coolant, then it can lead to kidney failure and it can happen fairly rapidly, mm. you know, within 12 hours or so. Um, and so the first thing that you might see is your pets might actually start to look a little bit drunk, essentially. <laughs> they start to kind of become a taxid, not aware of their surroundings. You might notice that they have vomiting, diarrhea, they're sort of lethargic. And then very quickly, this progresses to kidney failure. If you feel like your pet has ingested antifreeze, please get them to a veterinarian right away so your veterinarian can take precautions um, to decontaminate your pet's body from antifreeze. Uh, before it, it becomes too late. So timing is of, of the utmost importance. Timing is very important with antifreeze toxicity. And kind of the same, you know, sometimes rats are gonna be seen more in the garages to keep away and stay safe from the cold. Um, what are some safe alternatives for rat poisoning? Yes, rodents are gonna want to enter your house. It's hot, it's, it's cold outside. They're gonna wanna hide and get warm inside your home and your attic, in your garage, and so, you know, it's not the, the rodents themselves that, that are toxic in any way, but certainly you may not want a home with rodents in it. So you're gonna be wanting to put out rat poisons to get rid of them, but you have to be aware that rat poisons could also put your pets at risk. So dogs, cats that eat that rat poison could also be at risk. So if you're trying to get rid of rodents around your home, Think of a couple of ways to do it without poisons. For example, make sure your trash is, is tied up and in a sealed container. So you wanna make sure that there's no food or trash accessible to the rodents. You also wanna make sure um, that you uh, pick up things off of, the, off of the floor that they can hide in. So they may wanna hide in an old dresser or, or something. Make sure the areas are clean and there's not a lot of area for them to hide and build a nest in. And then you may wanna make sure that any access points to your home are sealed off. So if you have any access points where uh, rodents can sort of get into your home and get into the walls, make sure those are sealed off. You can contact uh, your local pest control they can give you alternatives to rat poisons. They can give you safer ways to trap, uh, humanely uh, trap rodents in your home and remove them from your property. But rat poison, if you have pets, dogs, cats, then rat poisons could be dangerous to them as well. And you want to avoid them if at all possible. 
in the last, you know, week or two, we've seen more like mushrooms in our yard, you know, or, or the talk, the mushrooms found in our area in Houston, are they toxic to pets or something we should look out for? Yes. So it is possible that mushrooms in your yard could be toxic to pets. The, the type of mushroom that's most toxic is called an Amanita mushroom. And so you want to make sure uh, that if your pets are outside, you know, they're going to be sniffing these muf- mushrooms. And certainly there are some dogs uh, that love to, again, explore with their mouths. And so they see this mushroom, they may take a bite out of it. If your pet ingests mushrooms and it's a toxic type, you may notice again that pretty quickly within 15 to 30 minutes, you might notice that they are also having what we call central nervous system disturbances. Um, They may be ataxic, they may appear uh, not aware, Um, they may have drooling, they could also have vomiting, diarrhea. So any history of eating a mushroom or if you see mushrooms in your yard, please take your pet to the veterinarian right away. Again, they will work on decontaminating your pet's gastrointestinal system to reduce all of the clinical signs and side effects. Um, someone has a senior dog that seems to limp more in the colder weather. Can they give them any supplements or help with joint pain? Yeah, so the, the key word that I heard you say there is senior pets, <laughs> and that's because you know our seniors, our geriatric pets, are more likely to be experiencing joint pain like arthritis. And so when the weather is cold, the joints become stiffer and they're just a little bit less limber and that can make them a little bit more stiff in their gait, maybe slower to get up or to lie down. It could mean that they have trouble finding a a comfortable way and place to lie down. So yes, please talk to your veterinarian about supplements that you can give to your pet to try to keep them more comfortable. There are things like chondroitin, glucosamine, um, and these sorts of, of molecules that can actually help to protect and repair some of the cartilage damage in the joint. So yes, uh, there's even some diets that mm. you can talk to your veterinarian about prescribing that can be a constant source of healthy vitamins for joints. Um, an interesting question came in is, is it safe for our dogs to play in a pile of leaves? Oh, how fun. Is it safe for the dogs to play in a pile of leaves? You know, overwhelmingly, I would say yes, it's fine if they play in there. You just have to be careful that there's always things that could be hiding in the pile of leaves. So hopefully there's no uh, pointy sticks or branches you know, or anything sharp that as they dive into the pile of leaves, it's going to cause, you know, any puncture wounds or lacerations. So again, being aware of your yard, making sure that the pile doesn't have something hidden in it uh, that could be dangerous. But, but certainly could be a fun activity for you and your pets to engage in. And what if they, you know, accidentally eat them, you know, eat the leaves? Is that, you know, okay for them yeah. or one or two? You know, we see that all the time. And again, you know, if they ingest a few bites of leaf, probably won't be a problem, but they're doing this a lot. Yes, this could create a foreign body as those leaves may not pass the gastrointestinal tract. Um, you know, very well. So certainly not large amounts. It certainly could cause an obstruction. Um, but again, your pets are sometimes going to explore with their mouths and may take a couple of bites out of it. Shouldn't be a problem unless you're seeing them really ingest large amounts of leaves. And what's a, you know, interesting, fun activity that we can do this fall? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, we you know, we mentioned hiking and taking walks because the weather's cooler. So it's, you know, maybe a lot more enjoyable to be outside. That's certainly something that you can do with your pets. Again, being outside and doing activities with your family, like carving pumpkins and, and letting your pets be a part of that can also be fun. Um, make sure that if you, you can also do the costumes too, and you can take your pets trick or treating if you feel like that's something that they would be, uh, that they would be excited about just to be out on a walk. Um, around people. Uh, so, so those are all really, really fun things that you can do. You could also maybe consider having like a fun photo shoot for your pet. You know, we talked about your pets being uh, in the pile of leaves and maybe hanging out while carving the pumpkins. This would be a great time to do cute photo shoots with your pets. A uh, great family time as well. And we've been seeing Mabel, you know, he's so adorable this throughout this podcast. And we do notice, you know, she's a black cat. You know, what is what are, um, is, obviously she doesn't bring bad luck, but what if, you know, we do see some inhumane treatment more, you know, during this time of year, what can we do? Yes, that's unfortunate that this time of year can sometimes bring more um, animal cruelty and abuse as it relates to black cats and Halloween. If you notice that this is occurring, you see it happening in your neighborhood or you hear about it, you know, please don't hesitate to call us here at the Houston SPCA so that we can get our cruelty investigations team on that right away. You can call uh, 713-869-7722. 
and there is an extension there that you can call to report animal cruelty and abuse. Uh, and we want to get on that and stop that right away. We want to make sure that our pets are staying safe. If you have a black cat as a pet, this might be a good time for you to consider keeping your pet indoors, uh, particularly in the days leading up to Halloween, um, just so that they're not outdoors and, and potentially being um, subjected to uh, cruelty or abuse. And you know, October is Black Cat Awareness Month. Yes. So we want to make sure we're going to get as many of these black cats adopted to find them. Absolutely. Home. They're they're wonderful cats. There's no superstition related to them. They're not bad luck. They are wonderful, wonderful pets. So consider coming on down. Meet with Mabel. She's a wonderful cat. Meet with all of our cats that we have available for adoption. Uh, we thank you for joining us every week and giving us the opportunity to give you a little bit of tips and tricks uh, for keeping your pets safe and happy, happy throughout the year. So again, join us next Friday. In the meantime, come on down to our adoption center, visit our website at HoustonSPCA.org and figure out how you can be helpful to us in our mission in protecting animals, freeing them from suffering, abuse and exploitation and getting them into happy, healthy homes forever. Thank you so much. I'm your host, Dr. Roberta Westbrook, and we'll see you next week.